Welcome to my uh, YouTube channel, Physics Matters. Today I plan to actually start a new tutorial series, or it's actually not a new tutorial series, it's a reboot of one which I have done previously about GN4. Yeah, because first of all, I didn't have too much time in the past to continue with these uh, tutorials. Secondly, uh, the code base already became too large. Thirdly, there are quite a few new GN4 versions released and I'm also receiving a lot of questions from different people to first of all continue and also dedicated questions to the code itself. So I decided actually now to restart it with the newest GN4 version. Yeah, before really diving into the topic, uh, as you know, I'm always starting with a short motivation and overview. Yeah? Uh, in this case, why we would need GN4. Now in the next video then I will continue with the installation and after that with some further uh, tutorial videos. Yeah, so the old videos I will of course keep online. You can always have a look at it and you can also find the link in the description. Uh, but uh, I would be also happy as well if you follow this tutorial series. The question is of course first what is GN4 and why we need it. So um, GN4 is a Monte Carlo simulation toolkit. And it actually, the, the main purpose is to simulate particles, electrically charged particles or neutral particles through matter. And uh, this is done by breaking the trajectory of the particle into small pieces and then calculating the probability for interaction of this uh, trajectory part with matter based on the cross section. Yeah? So the cross section of a certain process gives you a probability and uh, by this probability GN4 can then simulate the process that happens. So for example it could be Coulomb scattering, yeah, a particle scattered uh, at various uh, atoms in a, in a medium and uh, then GN4 can for example use the Rutherford cross-section to calculate that probability. And of course a particle can also lose energy yeah? and then uh, this energy loss could be simply calculated with the help of Beta Bloch which is also done internally. So of course GN4 did not appear suddenly, yeah, it, uh, it was developed throughout many years and it is mainly done by the so-called GN4 collaboration at CERN, uh, which was founded already in 1994. Yeah? And uh, the reason is that at that time the LHC was on the horizon, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, and uh, they needed a new framework with which they can actually simulate interaction of particles with matter inside these detectors that are built for the LHC, for example. And uh, the previous framework which they were using, this is called GN3. Uh, this has the really huge disadvantage that it uh, is absolutely not well documented. No? So I think uh, really writing something in GN3 is very difficult. And uh, it is also based on Fortran, which was at that time state of the art, but later it turned out that actually other programming languages are much better for that purpose, for example C++. Yeah? And this is also the way how GN4 was developed. It is really based on modern C++ with the help of object-oriented programming, making it quite easy to uh, yeah, to use it and also uh, yeah, user-friendly, so to say, and also performant. Yeah, uh, then of course uh, it is also, or GN4 was also intended slowly uh, with time to include all possible particle interactions, not only the ones which we use in particle physics. Uh, so at the end, yeah, it was used also in, for example, space science, in medical applications, and also uh, imaging and radiotherapy. And uh, some examples you can see here on the upper right figure you can see a human head where some particles are going through. This could be for example happen if you have an irradiation of a tumor cell. There's also a framework called GATE which is actually GN4 with a few more gimmicks and this is very widely used in medical physics in order to calculate energy loss of particles in human tissues but also to create new type of imaging devices like new PET scanners for example. And here on the lower right figure you can see a satellite orbiting around the Earth. Of course you have um, yeah, radiation from the Sun and also from other galaxies which can hit these satellites and uh, they can also then of course get damaged by this. Or you have other kind of uh, reversible problems like for example single event upsets 
All these things you can actually simulate with the help of GN4. Okay, now the question is of course how we can use GN4. So as I said before, it is written in C++, which allows actually object-oriented design. Um, you can also download this here from this link. We will do this later when we talk about the installation. Uh, and you will also see that uh, within Linux the installation works quite well. Within Windows it's a little bit tricky, um, but uh, maybe we can also cover this as well in the future. But uh, I can always recommend to do this for example in Ubuntu, which works out of the box. Yeah, then uh, what GN4 actually does, it provides uh, header files and also libraries in order to write your own user-specific simulation code, uh, which means actually that you create a CMake project with some source files and header files, which you can compile against GN4, and then it makes use of all the physics that is actually implemented in GN4. Yeah, this makes it uh, quite nice to uh, create your own user-defined classes and functions without knowing the rest of the toolkit. So you can use certain classes provided by GN4 and then inherit from them and cre create your own user-defined classes. Yeah, so here you can see some examples of classes from which you can inherit. For example, physics lists. Yeah, you have certain physics lists, for example, for electromagnetic interactions, uh, this G4EM standard physics list for hadronic interactions, but also for many other kind of interactions. Uh, also, um, for example, radioactive decays, all that you can simulate with the help of these so-called physics lists. Then, of course, there is also a class for a particle gun. You can set certain parameters, for example, uh, the energy of the particle, direction of the particle, or the vertex position where the particle is created. And this is actually... Uh, what you need in addition to the particle species of course and then you have a full definition of the particle. And an example of how such a particle generator looks like you can see here on the right side just an example code. Yeah then also you have classes of course for materials and geometry. Um, yeah so you have to define of course certain densities of, of uh, volumes. You have create you can create elements but you can also um, take them from GN4 tables that are included already. Uh, you also can define refractive indices of, uh, of volumes as we will also see a little bit later. And all that is, uh, is actually quite easy as we will see. And yeah, then you can also define sensitive detectors because of course it's not enough for us uh, sometimes that we know what kind of interaction a particle is doing inside a certain volume, but we also want to have detectors that can detect these particles and we know what is the probability of this particle to be detected, the detector resolution we want to calculate and, and so on. So for that we have, uh, yeah, we can define then certain volumes um, that uh, can write out, for example, the energy deposition inside this detector. Yeah, so here you can see an example of what you can do with GN4 and this is exactly the same example that I have also shown in my previous tutorial series, just to, uh, yeah, just to give a short overview. And uh, what we have here is a world volume, which is this cube, which is also just filled with air. And then we have a radiator, um, yeah, kind of aerogel plate inside this world volume, uh, which, uh, which has the advantage of having a very small refractive index. So you can actually create Cherenkov light and uh, measure the Cherenkov cone by having the sensor array here. And then we have here a coordinate system uh, just to visualize the distances between these different components. So what we can do, we can press now here this um, play button which says run beam on one. And when we do this, we can see one negatively charged particle, which is an electron. In this case, just um, passes through this radiator and then creates Cherenkov light. And we can see this very beautiful cone here uh, creating hits on the sensors. Uh, some of these Cherenkov photons that are created also uh, go astray. This is normal, I think, because everything is just uh, purely statistics. Um, I think more interesting effects we can see if we actually type in run beam on 100. So now instead of only one event, 100 events are created and they are all accumulating. Yeah, so we can see really here a bunch of 100 electrons which are shot one after the other through the radiator. And interestingly now we can also see uh, interactions between the electron 
and also the air in the world volume. Yeah, if you want to avoid this, you just have to create a vacuum, but now we use air, so we can really see very clearly some additional electrons that are created uh, along the way. And these are just simple delta electrons. So in this certain place, the energy loss of the electron is so huge that further electrons are kicked out and uh, yeah, and then create here this very nice, nicely visible um, yeah, trajectory of electrons. We can also see that more light that is created goes astray. So we can see some of the light is even internally reflected inside this um, inside this radiator. And um, we can also see even these delta electrons that are created actually create Cherenkov light. This will be then later visible as background. And then what you can do, you can actually write out the sensor information, uh, for example, in the form of an ASCII file. This is the easiest way how to do that. Of course, if you have a large number of uh, hits, it makes sense to use a file format, which can also handle big data. And in this case, uh, it would be in principle root. Yeah, so you can, GN4 has a built-in uh, analysis manager with which you can directly create root files and root trees and tuples and then you can write your own root script or root, root macro and actually uh, read out these uh, uh, files and then display them. So here in this case you can see I just wrote a simple plot script that uh, plots the x values against the y values of the sensor array and we can see this very nice pattern here. So now we could directly take the or calculate the radius of uh, that ring and then divide this by the distance be between the radiator and the sensor plane. And if we then calculate the inverse tangent from that, we could immediately calculate the Cherenkov angle. And if we know uh, the momentum of the particle, then we could, for example, do PID and calculate which particle mass it was or which particle it was. Here you can see another example that I have created in uh, one of the later stages of the previous tutorial series. And this is in principle a PET. So what we have here are scintillators and sensors. So the scintillators are shown here in this blue kind of color and uh, the detectors are shown in purple color. And uh, we have quite a lot of these sensors. And when we now press run beam on, we can see now two neutral particles shown in green color, two photons. So what I added here is a physics list which mimics radioactive decays. So in principle, we have now really uh, two gammas with an energy of 511 uh, kilo electron volt going in opposite directions. And if I able to get it into the right position, we should be able to see additional photons that are created uh, within the scintillators. Yeah, so the photon uh, loses energy, creates charged particles, and this uh, then create further uh, photons. So now uh, we can also do the same like last time. We can create simply more radioactive decays by, running, uh, by writing run beam on, for example, 100 sorry, uh, run beam on 100. And now we can see uh, again a lot of photons that are emitted from the center. And uh, we can also see some of these photons interacting with the air, uh, creating additional electrons here, um, but in, in very rare cases. Yeah? And this also leads to some scattering of these photons. yeah. So in reality, you have to apply some energy filter in order to make sure that you only get unscattered photons yeah, in order to not decrease the resolution. But uh, overall, it works quite well. And um, yeah, now we can, in principle, use this information, uh, write our own analysis tool in order to then reconstruct the image and also, for example, calculate the energy or spatial resolution of this PET. Yeah, and this is everything which I want to uh, want to cover in this tutorial uh, of this new tutorial series. In the next tutorial, I will then explain how to install the newest GN4, GN4 version in Ubuntu or here in this case Linux Mint, which works the same. 
And uh, then after that, we will go a little bit deeper into this by having a look at uh, certain examples and also create our own uh, codes. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and I really hope that we will meet soon for the next part uh, when it comes to the installation. Uh, if you have any ideas what topics I should cover, which kind of um, simulation I should do, uh, please write it into the comment section. Also give me some feedback if you like this tutorial or not. And then according to that, I can interactively adjust my lectures. Thank you very much for your attention.